is Mark Prisk. He's Minister for UK Business and Enterprise. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, David Cameron is talking about this uh, relentless uh, drive uh, to support growth and uh, job creation. In practical terms, what can you do, particularly outside of the capital? Well, what we've been doing already is to make it easier and cheaper for people to employ people. That's why you'll find that in a place like Leicester, the national insurance costs are going to be going down for employers, and that makes it easier for them to take on new staff and grow. Well, Stephen Robertson, uh, the head of the uh, British uh, Retail Consortium, told me the other day that above all, it's the April's rise in business rates that is going to hurt most retailers, small businesses. Would you reconsider that? Well, the business rates is always an issue. It sits on your, uh, uh, your, uh, your bottom line. Mm. It's a fixed overhead. So I do understand that problem. What I would say is that we've doubled the rate of small business rate relief for this coming year, and that should help those smaller businesses that Stephen's talking about. When it comes to the VAT rise, that's something uh, that's going to affect not just uh, retailers, but also all small businesses, a trickle-down effect. We're not necessarily going to see it in their bottom line in uh, January and February, but further on, that's going to be something uh, that George Osborne has said is going to be a constant, this 20% VAT. Is, that not a, is it not something of a priority to bring that back down again? Well, actually, what business say to us is, please don't fiddle with the taxes you know, year in, year mm. out. We saw that under Labour. Every six months we had a new budget, new rates. So, no, we want clarity, consistency and simpler taxes. When it comes to uh, the idea of getting job creation, um, the coalition government has talked consistently about the idea that you're going to take people who are in the public sector who are going to lose their jobs and then they're going to be absorbed by the private sector. We heard in uh, Elliot Gotkin's report there and uh, many union leaders saying that's j it's just not possible for a healthcare worker to put on a hard hat and build an Olympic stadium. What do you say to that? Well, I'm sorry they don't have the confidence in individuals. Now, clearly those individuals need help with retraining and apprenticeships, and that's why we're increasing the number of apprenticeships over the next four years, so that by the end of this parliament there'll be 75,000 additional apprenticeship places. And these, remember, are for adults, so therefore this is an excellent way in which businesses can take someone in and retool their, their skills base so they can actually contribute in the private sector. So I don't share the negative negative arguments towards British workers. I think they're ready to get out there and get on with it. We need to help them. One of the biggest uh, issues that we get, uh, that, that we're faced with uh, every time we talk to small businesses is the fact that banks simply don't lend to them. I'm talking about the, the main retail banks. What do you do? What more can you do to persuade them to lend? Well, there's several things. I mean, I used to run my own business. In fact, I started my business at the bottom of the last recession, so I know the squeeze that people feel about this. Um, what I would say to you is, first of all, two-thirds of the smallest businesses who seek loans get them. That's important to remember. So businesses should not be deterred by thinking that they won't get, get their loan. They've got a good chance. But to help that, we've been extending the enterprise finance guarantee so that over the next four years, they'll be unlocked about two billion more of lending. And that, I think, will make a real difference to the availability of credit. Mark Priss, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.